300 miles southwest of Minneapolis in the open space of South Dakota. Got a couple burns knocked at us. Yeah, there, there was a big one, big one out there last time we launched. There you go. I'll just go ahead and do that while we're waiting on electronics. It's all right, we have the technology. The scientists and engineers are about to test one of the most significant breakthroughs in stratospheric aviation. Uh, rigging lead crew chief. Go for crew chief. Uh, pad checks complete. Copy. This balloon will spend up to five months in the air at an altitude of 70,000 feet, twice as high as this flight currently cruising from Minneapolis to Las Vegas. So you're up above the weather at that altitude, so there's no air traffic, you don't have any of the weather patterns, the jet stream. Jim Nelson is the president of Aerostar, a leading aerospace defense company based in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He says today's launch is emblematic of Aerostar's leading aviation into the next frontier, the ability to navigate balloons in the stratosphere. So here is our altitude control system. As soon as you can adjust your altitude. Now you can find the winds you're looking for and adjust to that wind uh, then going in a different direction. So it isn't a replacement for aircraft. It's not a replacement for spacecraft. It really provides this unique perspective of taking what things can be done in, in space and done on the ground and it's a really a great middle ground. Flight engineer to crew chief, ATC and telemetry are a go. You're clear for launch. Three, two, one, release. Balloon away, 951. According to Aerostar, the company is a key partner of NASA and the U.S. Department of Defense. It's also worked with Google and other major telecommunications conglomerates. How many balloons does Aerostar have up in a year? So we probably launch about 100 balloons a year. And that's military, and that's civilian, and that's weather, and... That's commercial, yep, and for our own internal research and development, just kind of across that board, and, and we only see that accelerating as we move forward. For decades, high-altitude balloons have flown under the public's radar, but that all changed last February. They successfully took it down, and I want to compliment our aviators who did it. The U.S. military shooting down what officials described as a Chinese surveillance balloon. First discovered over Alaska, the balloon then floated through Canada, into Montana, across the Midwest, and finally off the coast of South Carolina, and passing many sensitive U.S. sites in the process. According to the Chinese government, the balloon shot down off the coast of South Carolina was a weather balloon that veered off course. One week later, and still in the shadow of a looming international crisis, three more objects were spotted over U.S. and Canadian airspace, including one shot down by the Minnesota Air National Guard over Lake Huron. If any object presents a threat to the safety and security of the American people, I will take it down. What was it like for you this past February? Uh, it was really interesting because suddenly all of my friends and relatives wanted to know what it was that I did. There's lots of variation. At Aerostar, project manager Sarah Van Huysen describes a threefold purpose to the Aerostar fleet, connect, protect, and save lives. I think people think of a balloon as something very simple that can't do very much, when really a balloon can do a lot more than people realize. Over Puerto Rico, after the Hurricane Maria devastated the island's infrastructure, uh, we used a constellation of balloons to build back up cellular networks for people. So we had a constellation of balloons continuously over the island for several months. In Afghanistan, uh, aerostats, which are tether balloons provided by Aerostar, were kind of a, a tower in the sky over uh, military bases. It had, they had radars, communication systems, uh, threat deterrents. We're not doing surveillance of U.S. citizens. Another balloon in production right now will carry thermal imaging cameras to help firefighters during the summer wildfire season out west. NASA, meanwhile, deploying this 800-foot Aerostar balloon carrying a telescope that just sent back these remarkable images. 800 feet. Yes, yeah, so you're talking 60 million cubic feet. So you could take the Superdome and put it inside the balloon. Take target field and fit it inside the balloon very easily. Good film. I haven't seen you guys stop once. A massive balloon made in this production facility. This is extremely strong. The production manager showing us the plastic film that's thinner than a trash bag, but much stronger. To the casual observer, this isn't Boeing or Lockheed Martin, but how intricate, how high-tech a process is this? So I, it's, a, it's a definite skill set, right? I mean, there's automation and there's engineering to it, right? 
temperature, speed, all that. Same risk on a balloon happen that a, uh, that a, uh, your F-16 might happen, right? They're both in the sky, they're both carrying weight, they both can come down at any time based on a defect. This box-like structure is quite critical, the FCU, or flight control unit. Is this also what tells air traffic control and is this also what tells the right. U.S. government yep. that this is right. what it's supposed so this, to be? So this, this will ping so, so air traffic control and our flight engineers can track the balloon. Hi, this is Mitchell with Aerostar. Just letting you guys know our balloon is airborne. This presumably was not what was on those balloons that were shot down last winter. All I can tell you is Aerostar requires somebody to be in control of our balloons 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What is the message to, to people at home who are now just being completely overwhelmed by learning about this? Yeah, I'd say first is to, to not be worried about uh, about this coming in. It's it's like anything new of getting into space, getting into aviation is it's in its early stages. And there are so many positive things that you can do with a balloon uh, with such a lower environmental impact. Um, you know, there's it's really opening up a new era for aviation. In Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Good luck to everybody. Jonah Kaplan. CBS News, Minnesota.